The universe is an ocean, where order and chaos are constantly at war. In this battle, order has a name. The Synarch. From Arkashan, he governs the galaxy with an iron fist. His power and influence seem limitless. Still, there are many efforts to undermine the power of the Synarchy. From the distant corners of the universe to even within the High Council itself. To counter these efforts, the Synarch has a tool. The Colosseum, where all can find their echo. These modern gladiator games provide entertainment for the masses while reinforcing the Synarch's absolute control. For the winners, glory and the ultimate honor away. Each fighter controls his combat clone at a distance. Strategy, teamwork, and coordination will be the tools of Victorious. And with the interests of planets and giant corporations at stake, no measure is too extreme. In the games of glory. How's it going, MMO Huts? This is Dizzy PW, and I'm here to bring you guys a special first look Welcome from something that we don't often get to share with the, the public. This is actually Glory a friends and family riches. beta test for Lightbulb Crew's upcoming action MOBA, Games of Glory. There's, before you jump to any conclusions just on the visual style about this one, I just want to say this is not a LOL clone, this is not a Dota clone. If anything, despite its top-down view, it's actually the closest I could say is probably Smite. This is because this game is a action MOBA where your auto attacks are based on an ammo system and you have to aim each one of them. And let me tell you, that can be pretty tricky to figure out. But before I get into that, let's talk a little bit about who these guys are. So if you've heard of Lightbulb Crew before, I commend you. You either follow our site very, very closely, or you are just one of those people that tries to pretend to be smart and say you know things that you don't. Because Games of Glory is Lightbulb Crew's first game. And at the time that I was invited to test it out, they were trying to get some funding for their Kickstarter campaign. Turns out somebody saw this game and thought it was a pretty sweet idea. Skip that whole Kickstarter process for them. They're fully funded now, so this game is going to be a reality. And uh, as you saw in that opening trailer, this uh, setting is a sci-fi MOBA, which again is also setting it quite a bit apart from other MOBAs. And it's in a situation where the players are actually involved with kind of a Star Wars-esque government system where there's supposedly order, but everyone's plotting against everyone, everyone's backstabbing everyone. And so in order to deal with things kind of in a politically correct manner, the representatives of each faction have gladiators get together and fight in front of an arena for everyone to see. So you've got almost like a Roman Sparta system happening in a galactic war. And I like it. It's a pretty cool idea. I especially like the fact that instead of a summoner, you're the character itself and you're creating clones of yourself to fight in your stead. So enough about the backstory. They're going to have plenty more of that coming out and how like fights are actually going to impact the storyline, a la how League of Legends kind of had planned to do before they sold their soul to esports. But inside of this setting, you've got your typical items that you buy, but you don't earn them by uh, sitting around for a long time killing minions. Instead, these minions that you take out are neutral and will attack anyone. And when you kill them, you have to pick up the coins that they drop to get the money. So your support can actually sit back, even if they're the ones that last hits the minion, and let whoever you on your team pick them up. I'm not sure if they're going to do any kind of like economic sharing system. Well, that still remains to be seen. But the gold does work, as you imagine, where you would buy items that upgrade your stats, your cooldown, give you movement speed, all that, with uh, six items total that you can purchase during a match. Where it sets itself apart, though, is it has an interesting weapon swap system where there's roughly, at this time, about 11 to 12 weapons in the game. Some melee, some range, some with AoE explosions, some with pushbacks. And you're not bound to a weapon based on which of the uh, heroes you pick. Instead, you get to choose which weapons you want, and you can even switch with them on the fly with the S button. So if you run out of ammo on one, you can hop to the other and kind of change up your find style. That way, even assassin characters can harass from range on the standoff. Range characters can switch to a melee weapon for some quick burst damage if somebody pressures them up close. 
And it's pretty interesting that you don't just right click on someone, automatically start attacking them or automatically path to them. You have to manually activate your weapon to attack. So if you're facing the wrong direction with your mouse and you start pressing buttons, you're just going to be flailing around hopelessly not doing anything. But if you really know what you're doing, you can land these skill shots and chase somebody down and kill them really fast. And by really fast, I don't, I'm not trying to exaggerate. This is probably one of the most fast paced MOBAs I've ever seen. If you mess up for even a second, you're dead. Um, beyond that, they're going to have multiple modes in this, but currently they only have this one in their friends and, f in their friends and family beta. Uh, it's similar to things like if you've done Domination and Smite, you'll be familiar with this. There's six points on the map to control, uh, five of them on the main map, and then there's teleporters next to two of the portals that can take you down to a secret bottom one. And what these portals do is they slowly detract points from your force fields is guarding your base. So the three in the center of the map will help you deduct your opponent's force field points. The other three on the sides of the map are more of a currency force field that'll help you gain like regular intervals of money if you can hold them. Uh, beyond that, you don't just win for taking out the force field. Once the force field is down, then you have to attack their towers and their core sphere to finish the game off. So even if your team isn't able to take out the enemy's force field first, you can still make a last stand, kill off your enemy, and then make a comeback in this game. Uh, you also, I haven't seen anything similar to summoner skills or actives from items as of yet, but there are skills that use a different uh, resource system than your core uh, weapon system. And like for my character, for instance, I'm an assassin character that is very easily juked by running around a pillar, apparently. And I have four skills. One is similar to Ari's heart charm, except there's some pathing issues because it's so early in the beta, so it doesn't really work as it's supposed to yet. But then I can run in and I can do a flail AoE melee range to do some damage and some damage over time poison. And then I've got a poison dart I can shoot that'll AoE... Uh, hold people down, what's the word, rude in MOBAs, and then I haven't unlocked it yet, but my ultimate is kind of like Loki's from Smite, where I can jump to somebody, hit him from behind, and uh, take him out that way. So it gives you a couple of different, between the weapons that you purchase and the skills that you unlock, you have some different options, such as you can jump to somebody, hit them with a bunch of melee weapons, and then as they are running away from me, I could switch to a pistol and shoot them down and take out the rest of their health. Uh, I would say the ranged weapons are a little bit OP versus the melee at the current state of the game, but they've done a little bit to balance this in the form of regeneration. Now normally you don't get very much passive health regeneration in Games of Glory, but instead it's balanced out in that if you get harassed for a lot of damage from ranged and then you manage to step back and get away from your opponent for a while, you will regen a large portion of that range damage. So it makes the uh, risk of getting into melee range and actually cutting somebody up pretty... It's a lot more valuable because they won't be able to get that health back unless they go all the way back to their base, either by hitting the B button and teleporting, which takes a really long time in this game, or by walking, which is also can take a pretty long time. In terms of playable characters, they're still pretty early on in the testing, but they had about eight on offer for this test, and they are planning to have... 15 very shortly and it's all the archetypes you'd expect range like blow them up characters tanks that can run in and do lots of cc and support healer classes which the supports in this game surprise me a little bit based on the weapon system you can still do a lot of damage and get pretty fed and just mess people up as a healer and but when i call them a healer their heals aren't like an instantaneous Soraka type spike heal. They're mostly heals over time, support things, make your allies run faster. So it's still a very active role inside of the, like this guy right here is a healer coming after me and he's fed and I don't want anything to do with him. Uh, beyond that, they've also got your casters. They're, it's all technology based, so it's not your typical mage type casters. For but rather they might have a much higher energy pool or ammo pool than you're used to and skills that allow them to quickly um, quickly reload weapons that do long range AOE damage that normally don't have very many uh, shots they can fire or take a long time to recharge and so that's the way they're doing mages in this game. Beyond that, 
I think that it's a little bit strange that the minions in this game are really mean and they scale all the way to end game. And it gets pretty exciting in that they have a balance system in this mode in which after every couple of minutes they close down the three key points that you have to take over to lower your opponent's force field. And if you're standing inside, you'll get trapped inside of those walls and have to fight your way out with those minions. And most of the deaths I got in this game actually came from the minions themselves as they will group together and hit you a lot of times in really rapid succession. And unlike players, they don't miss very often, so you really gotta watch out for that. Anyway, back to the theming of the characters. I don't know the official factions or how it's going to affect the political system in this game, but from what I was testing out in this beta, there seems to be three primary groups. There's uh, my girl who seems to be part of this mutant jungle type group. All of, they're really like tribal in focus and they seem to have crazy augmentations even though they're mostly naturally gifted as hunters and killers. That crazy purple looking guy with the gun is one example of that. And then they've got another group that seems to use their worst prisoners to fight for them. So they've got a ball and chain guy who walks around your typical orange prisoner suit and throws around his ball to pull people in. And then finally they've got some kind of nobility faction which feels almost like it's themed straight out of uh, Thor. And that's the Asgardians. They've got one guy named Ragnar who can... It's hard to describe him. He's a tank, but almost like a caster tank. He can literally turn himself into an avalanche of snow and fly through your whole team. And has a lot of uh, inspires and just lockdowns and holds you down and lets his teammates beat on you. Um, another thing that I found interesting in my playtesting of Games of Glory is that they have a really heavy focus after matches are over on raiding your allies and enemies. You can describe people as being uh, brutish or like mean or just nasty or friendly or good team players. And you even get to rate uh, who the best opponent and best ally was on your team. So they seem like they're trying to expand on League of Legends system of rewarding good behavior, but taking a little bit to the next level. But again, there's not a whole lot of details on what these ratings are actually going to do for now. Uh, it, it gives me a lot of hope that Amoba is planning this early on. I know that Strife did it pretty well, and I hope they have something similar. But let's focus on this match. So we've actually got their force field down, and we've just been trying to win the team fight so that we can safely push in and take out their towers. I haven't actually gone to see how much damage their towers do as of yet. So considering there's no minions, I don't want to be alone when I go in and fight them. But we've got one of our guys disconnected. He ran a little bug in the game. And it's not too easy to win a 4v5 team fight. The other team is really fed. They've got most of their items purchased right now. They have two of the developers on their team, so that's not helping out at all. And I think I might just have to try and sneak in and see if backdooring is a possibility because... Uh, as opposed to developers, I have a couple of members of the press here that aren't too familiar with MOBAs and just keep running in and getting slaughtered. So here's the towers. Let's see just what they can do. Now you can see that white bar on me. That's the range damage I was talking about. So if I don't take damage for a couple of seconds, I can regen that back so I can walk out walk back in, kind of hit and run these, and I'm super fed as of this point. I've just been collecting all the gold that drops the whole game. So I can take a couple of decent hits and dish out damage really fast. I can say that the controls are still a little bit wonky, so as you can see, if I do it right, I can take out these towers on the first try, but if I do it wrong, I'm kind of going in and out, uh, messing with things. And then here's the core. I guess the core doesn't have any inherent defenses, so that's good. Uh, they can see you all over the map, but they seems like they're too busy trying to take out our base, so if they just leave me to it, I should be able to cut this down and uh, finish this match up. No one coming, no one coming, and it's over. Uh, so that's all we have for Games of Glory now. I'm sure we're going to be following this very closely over the next couple of months to see how they do now they've got some development money behind them. You can still check out their Kickstarter page if you want to learn a little bit more about the game. But as of right now, it's still very much in the concept stage. And I wish Lightbulb Crew the best of luck. And hopefully in the future, James Blond will be giving you the first look of a much more polished, developed game.